What's up, Navigating Academia family? This is Dr. J. Phoenix Singh coming in to be able to answer a valued viewer's question. Before we get started, make sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel if you have not done so already, and make sure to share a link to this video on your favorite social media account. It helps to be able to grow the channel. For the sake of the YouTube algorithm, do me a quick favor, leave a comment below in the comment section after you begin watching this video. If you hear something you really like, you can get a quote and put it in quotation marks. I don't know, people do that. People do that. Nobody does that on my videos. I don't know. Sometimes I think I've got some quotable shit, but other, other times I got nothing, right? So you can just tell me a quote that maybe you wish I had said down in the comment section. That'll work just fine. That'll work just fine. Helps the YouTube algorithm regardless. So today's question is from Chris. Chris is asking, hi, what are your thoughts on doing a PhD by publication? Thanks, Chris. Okay, well, again, Chris, thank you so much for watching, mate. Really appreciate you. So let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, a lot of people, Chris, you know, they haven't heard about PhD by publication. And this is because really it's something that's only taken root over the past 20 years or so. There were examples of these types of programs before then, but really it kicked off, I would argue, mostly in the UK and then spread super rapidly. You still don't see a lot of these programs in North America, specifically in the United States, but other countries that I've lived in, Germany, Switzerland, uh, Norway, you know, really embrace this type of model as one option that you've got. And the idea behind a PhD by publication, if you guys have never heard of it, is essentially these tend to be research degrees. These are not clinical degrees. You cannot basically submit a doctoral dissertation and then become a clinician like that. Okay. These are research degrees. And the idea is, is that you essentially conduct one or several research projects without being, usually without being formally enrolled in a program. Uh, in some countries, for instance, like Norway, literally you can just enroll after you've already gotten the project done and then basically say, I want to defend this work. And then they, you know, take a look at it and then they allow you in and then they will help you organize everything under kind of a temporary supervisor, as it were. Uh, and then essentially you can defend your work, provided that the work has been published in, uh, you know, peer reviewed journals. Uh, it, exactly the nature of the journals will differ. Sometimes people will say book chapters are okay. Sometimes people will say, oh, well, you know, this is a non impact factor journal. Is that okay or not? To be on the safe side, just assume impact factored, peer reviewed journal articles, okay? Usually it's going to either be on uh, a variety of different articles uh, that are on either the same project or each article will be on a different project that has been conducted and the number of publications completely and totally differs. I read a very interesting annotated bibliography on this a few months ago. Uh, if you're not familiar yet with Publication Academy, you should go and visit it now. It's www.publicationacademy.com. It is, it literally just came out this week. It is the largest uh, online training platform ever developed to be able to help folks like yourself be able to publish peer-reviewed research in top-tier journals, get successful grant proposals prepared, uh, everything under the sun. When it comes to academia and scholarship, it is your best friend. It's the most comprehensive thing ever developed when it comes to scholastic publishing. So check it out, publicationacademy.com. One of the modules is specifically all about how to be able to essentially take your doctoral dissertation and get publications out of it, right? So obviously, if you were doing things external to a university, you're not gonna get any funding for a PhD by publication. Some people, that means a lot to them. You're not going to get any kind of formal training at the university level and so forth. However, if it's something, Chris, where you are not uh, in a position where you need to learn how to publish because this is something that, you know, maybe you want to read. There's great books out there. The books are extremely dense and extremely long. So if you want to essentially, you know, read one of those types of books because there's a whole bunch of them out there, right? But like I said, very long, very dense on a variety of topics that are kind of unnecessary in the aggregate. Or if you want to enroll in something like Publication Academy has got this thing called the Basic CAPS program. CAPS is Certified Academic Publishing Specialist. And basically it's got over 20 hours of training specifically on how to be able to publish peer-reviewed articles. You should do that class. If you're thinking about doing a PhD by publication, you should do that class because it's going to give you templates, exemplars, step-by-step -step instruction for every single part of a journal, uh, sorry, of a journal article. And it's also going to tell you how to pick the best journal, how to be able to prepare cover letters, just absolutely everything you need. It's going to be in there. Uh, that is legitimately what I recommend if this is the type of strategy you want to take. 
but it's also something where the overwhelming preponderance of people do not know how to publish. Uh, they could be like me, Chris. They could be people who did so great in terms of, you know, writing undergrad as an undergrad. You know, I got straight A's and like everything out of 3.96 out of 4.0 GPA uh, at a top tier university. Uh, I thought I was the bee's knees. I thought I was great. And all of a sudden I got into grad school and all of a sudden it is a completely and totally different style of writing. Uh, and especially when it comes to kind of higher impact factor journals, it is a completely and totally different world. So a lot of the times, even though people may want to do a PhD by publication, they're incapable of getting stuff published. I have seen that honestly, Chris, more than anything else. But like I said, if it's something where you want to spend the time and the energy and you want to use things like secondary data analysis, so you know the data is already out there, and then you're, maybe it's uh, in like an open data repository in terms of open science initiatives, you can get your hands on data. Um, maybe it's something that you're already skilled at data analysis, which is awesome. If you're not, it will be completely and totally insufficient to be using kind of basic stats like, you know, correlation coefficients and t-tests and z-tests and these things it's completely uh those those are great and they're basic building blocks but if you want to get a phd the level of your research design the level of your statistical complexity needs to be way higher than that extraordinarily higher than that uh, and so that's something important to take into consideration. If you're not great with stats, etc., you should not be hiring a consultant to be able to do that kind of work for you. You need to learn how to do it. In my opinion, the so okay. If you're in a research program, the sole purpose of getting a research doctorate, period, whether it's something where it's a PhD by publication or just a traditional program, is can you publish the work? Can you take a project from initial inception to planning to execution to publication the entire way through alone if you can do that and you could do that phd by publication in that exact same way if you can do it you have my respect okay again this is not something that's meant to be a clinical degree program and so forth uh, you know for that you need to go and get formal clinical training i would never recommend even if they had those programs i would never recommend every, anybody do something like that to me it's like borderline unethical even suggesting that um, so those are my thoughts, Chris. Thank you so much again for your question. If anybody else has any questions, feel free to post them below. If they're sufficiently high sensitivity in nature, I'll do my best to make a response video. And if they're really high specificity, I will ask you guys to be able to book a one-on-one -on -one session with me and we can go over everything and we can talk about it. All right, guys, talk to you soon. Peace.